Now let's look at some of the other things that you need to do. Ident identify document requirements based on the purpose and audience. So you've got to think about the orientation for, for an audience. If it's portrait, it tends to be easier to read, whereas if it's columns and tables, sometimes you'll want it to go across a page and the page to be wider, um, just so the table can fit on uh, better and it's easier to view. Sometimes a chart will uh, tend to be um, have the orientation of landscape as well. So orientation of portrait, uh, like a letter, straight up, straight down, easier to read unless you want to put in landscape uh, so it's wider across the page for things like charts and tables. Page sizes, you've got to think about it if it's if it's A4 or A5, an A5 little flyer, it'll reduce printing costs and be easy to post uh, or put in the pocket, great for flyers. A4 tends to be typical letter size, so slightly more formal for letters fitting into envelopes in the post. And A3 tends to be posters or even A2, a larger poster, if you uh, want to see it from a distance, or if there's a lot of information that you need to fit onto a page and allow people to read it, especially visually impaired users. Need for clarity, clearly you've got to be able to read it. If you can't read it, then the information is lost. Uh, again, think about uh, visually impaired users and whether they can read something at a distance or from a screen. Think about colours, uh, the lack of um, clarity, say for example, using red and green is a problem sometimes for people that are colorblind. Uh, clarity means that sometimes you have a dark font on a light background so the font can be easily read. Consistency, it just uh, is less distracting if things are consistent from one page to the other, easier to navigate, easy to read, and sometimes simplicity is best. Why maybe something should be paper-based? Maybe somebody hasn't got access to a screen some, uh, or a computer. Maybe they've not got an internet connection. Sometimes paper-based is easily portable, so you can carry it around with you and refer to it at a meeting, uh, and you don't need a computer or an internet connection uh, to be able to access that information. Now you've got to evaluate your documents, describing strengths and weaknesses of the documents in terms of quality, so how good they are, uh, do they look professional? Uh, are there any spelling mistakes? Is the format good? Think about the layout, as I said, where things are on the page. Is it easy to read, easy to scan across? Maybe you've got um, something like a logo in there. Is it in the right place? Possibly top right, somewhere like that, rather than being in the middle, so it's distracting. Spelling and grammar, have you checked spelling and grammar? Is that correct? Format and use of styles. So styles are where you'll have a header or a title of a certain or a certain look and style, and if that's consistent, then it'll look professional across the document. Uh, use of different fonts. Well, sometimes you might want one or two fonts, a couple of fonts across it, but really you want uh, no more than probably two fonts across a document, otherwise it starts to look unprofessional again and becomes difficult to read, so we're talking about consistency. Size of, fi size of files. Usually smaller files are better for sending off to a printer or sometimes size of files are better of the smaller so you can email or send uh, from one user to another, communicate them across. Uh, usually graphics are the things that tend to make a file size too large. So think about resolution, that's how many dots per inch uh, an image has and maybe think about compressing that image, making it smaller uh, without compromising too much quality so it still looks good. You've got to think about how large it is on the document and whether you can email that or send that to somebody else. Um, file format being a closed format. Um, the closed format means that maybe not everybody can read it, whereas if you put it in a particular format that everybody can read, uh, that's going to make it more accessible to a wider audience. So something like a Word document, you might think that everybody has Word on their computer, but Microsoft Office and Word is expensive, whereas you could save it something like a PDF file, and Adobe Acrobat Reader is free of charge, and anybody can read that. They don't have to have Microsoft Office and Word on their computer to be able to read it. Um, indexes and corresponding to reference pages, 
Sometimes you might have an index at the uh, contents uh, section at the beginning or an index page at the end so that you can find something in a lengthy document. Make adjustments and corrections, get rid of any spelling mistakes and get rid of any formatting error. This is where you're going to have to do before and after screenshots. So you might decide, OK, well, there is a spelling mistake or there's an error. Uh, screenshot it underneath this and then improve it and screenshot again afterwards. If you think it's perfect or you spent some time correcting it already, then maybe you could make an error and pretend that you've got a before and after screenshot. So if you've already done it, then make one or two errors and use that as the before and the one that you've got at the moment as the after. Ensure the document is relevant to the audience, so think who it's for. If it's for an adult or it's for a profession, uh, for supposed to be formal, so uh, you're expecting it to look professional and people to respond to it and take it seriously, especially if you're selling something or advertise, advertising an event, it needs to have uh, a good balance of graphics and text, be easy to read, uh, sent out to uh, a wide audience so maybe saved not as a word document but a pdf document maybe it's placed on the web um, maybe it's emailed out so think about file size that kind of thing is it relevant to the audience will they be able to read it and respond to it get it receive it um, will it be useful to them and then finally respond to feedback and provide commentary uh, get somebody else to have a look at your document. You might think it's excellent, but they might spot some errors or some improvements. Uh, give you some feedback, write down what they think of it, and maybe make some improvements and screenshot underneath.